In this video, we're talking about how you can speed up your editing workflow in Final Cut Pro X. Now this video is sponsored by Loop Deck, which Loop Deck is this control surface right here. And I'm gonna talk about how I've integrated this into my editing workflow as we discuss some topics on how you can speed up your editing process. All right guys, let's get into it. So I've got eight different things that's gonna really help speed up your editing workflow in Final Cut. And I'm gonna show this with a film that I'm working on right now. So I went up to Canada, I shot a mountaineering film, and I've been working a ton on this. But I've also been able to cut it super fast for a few reasons. Because when it comes down to it, your time is money. And if you're taking way too much time editing your content, then you can't produce more content. If you want to build a business on YouTube or if you want to build a business as a filmmaker or a creator, it's gonna help you to be able to edit faster because as you edit faster, you can get through more projects which will turn into more money, et cetera, et cetera. And also you're not gonna get frustrated if you're constantly working on an edit and you just can't get something right. So guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do filmmaking tutorials, I do product reviews, YouTube training, and I also like to go on adventures and do some like mountaineering films. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss one of these tutorials. Now this film that I'm working on is a mountaineering film that I did up in Canada and this film is all about climbing, but more importantly, this film is actually about a few other things. So it's about climate change, it's about storytelling and how creators can use storytelling to make a positive impact in this world, which is something that I truly believe in. Now, when I'm going through and editing this project, there are so many moving parts to it because I have the footage that I've shot, I've got music, I've got voiceover, I've got effects, and it all kind of ties together. And to be able to cut fast in a project like this, it takes a few steps before you actually get started with the edit. And even with the videos that I create on this channel, my tutorials, my reviews, where I have graphics and different things, there are th techniques that you can use to speed this up so that you can knock out a video in an hour or two and not spend eight, 10 hours working on something that shouldn't take you that long. Now I've integrated the loop deck into my editing workflow. And what this is, is it's a control surface. So instead of just doing keystroke editing, which is something I'll talk about in a minute, it gives you a surface that has different dials, different buttons that will allow you to do things in the edit with a single click or just a turn of a dial. And this is super powerful because having access to all of your tools on a surface makes it super easy to edit and actually speeds up the workflow. Now with the loop deck, it comes with a pre-assigned layout for editing for Final Cut Pro X. However, it's all about usability. So you can assign all these buttons to do different things. And there's four different layouts to the loop deck control surface. So when it's just on, you have one surface. Now, if you click the FN button, all the buttons can change and do something different. Now, if you go up to the top, you have a custom mode. Now you have an entire new layout and you click FN again and you have your fourth layout. So the ability to map out anything that you want and put it on like one or two keystrokes makes this a super powerful tool to speeding up your workflow. Okay, so let's get into my eight tips on how to speed up your editing workflow. Tip number one is to learn your program inside and out. Now this is essential and this might seem like obvious. However, a lot of people don't do this. You just go right into editing. You just kind of learn as you go. But honestly, take a step back and learn the software. This is what I did when I switched over to Final Cut. Originally I was using Premiere. And so instead of just going through and starting to cut, I took a step back and I got a tutorial series and I sat down for an entire weekend and only focused on learning the software inside and out. This is going to be one of the biggest things that's gonna speed up your editing workflow because if you know what you can do in the software, then you're gonna be able to create better edits and be able to just move faster overall. Now my second tip is to learn keystrokes. And so originally I started with just my keyboard. I just learned different keystrokes and how I edit is basically one hand on my mouse and then one hand on my keyboard, which is also now my loop deck. And I use a flow and you have to figure out your flow, which works best for you. But as I'm cutting, I'm able to use not only my keyboard, but now the control surface to do everything that I need to do to be able to cut faster. And that's one of the most powerful things about using 
a control surface, and your keyboard. And I use them together, and there's a reason for this. I can map out all of the buttons on my loop deck so that in a single click, I can have something happen. So if I wanna zoom, I just pull on one of these dials and I can zoom in and out of my timeline. Now, if I wanna go to the next cut point, I can use my big control dial and it flips through all the cut points. Now, a couple other things with the loop deck. What's really cool is you can edit while your footage is still in full screen and then be able to color grade your footage in real time just using the loop deck and never have to take your eyes off the screen. And this is something that you can't do just using the keyboard. And like I said earlier, because you can map this out to have whatever you want on each of the keys, I've basically built it to my editing workflow. So I have set up different toggle buttons, I've set up different controls, to each button and to each dial that makes sense for my editing workflow. So if I need to toggle like the inspector or I wanna to toggle my effects, I've mapped those all up to the P buttons at the top. As you figure out your workflow, you can start thinking through the different things that you do. So if you're like, oh, I always toggle my inspector back and forth. Well, great, I'm gonna map that out to this button here. You can either use loop deck as is or you can map it out and it's easy to do that. You just pull up the loop deck software and once you're in it, you see a complete layout of your loop deck. You can click on a button and it pulls up all the different options that you can have for that button. So P2 I've set to toggle the inspector, but if I wanted to say, put that to my delete marker, I can add that right there. And then now the loop deck is set up to delete a marker with that keystroke. So I highly suggest finding a workflow where you're not only just using a mouse, because that is a very slow process of editing. The third way to speed up your editing workflow is to create presets. So with all the graphics you use, the effects that you use, and the transitions that you use, think through what are something that I use over and over and over. And you can use these presets in a couple ways. Now, if you wanna dive more into actually embedding these into your folders, what you can do is go into Motion, build out the effects there because all these effects are built in Motion and then you can create custom ones that you use over and over and over. Now another way that's less techy, easier to do, is just create the effects and create the graphics and everything that you use over and over and just build a separate timeline with all of them in there. And then you can go to that timeline, copy it, and then paste the attributes to the effect on your new timeline or copy and paste like the title bring it over, change the text, and now you have the graphic built and you don't have to go through and modify every little thing. I use this technique all the time and I've started diving more and more into motion and building out my effects so that everything's just pre-built and then I can just drop it right on and not have to worry about copy and pasting and things like that. Okay, my fourth tip is know your footage. Now this is super important and this is something that will really speed up your workflow but a lot of people don't do this. And if you just shot your content, say you're shooting your own YouTube videos, then you're probably gonna know what's in your footage. But if you're cutting this down the road a few days later and you didn't just freshly shoot, you don't know everything that's in your footage. So I have it set up where I can visually see all my clips and then I have my viewing window large. So as I go through this, I can just scrub through the footage using my mouse or I could play the footage double time, quadruple time, and basically just scrubbing through and looking at what is all here. And if you're doing more with audio, you're obviously gonna wanna play it and hear what people are actually saying so you know what's in this footage. Doing this step before you actually edit will make it easier to edit. And I know it seems counterintuitive because you're like, well, if I'm not cutting, I'm just wasting time looking at stuff. Knowing where all your footage is and what you have makes it easier when you're cutting because as you cut, you'll be like, oh yeah, I have this clip or I know I have this. Another step to this would be organizing your footage into keyword buckets. So basically you could go through and be like, okay, these are all visual shots of like a waterfall. I've got a mountain range here. I've got some cool visual footage and this is lower on the mountain. This is before I get up and actually start climbing. So I might create a keyword around this that is hiking or hiking to the glacier. So that when I'm cutting that part of the film, I know I could just go to that batch of footage and see everything and not have to go through and hunt for things in all the footage. Now you can get more detailed than this. So I could say, close-ups of ice climbing. And that's all the footage that I have that's close-ups of ice climbing, which for each person, depending on what you're working on and how, what access you need to your footage, building out these keywords and building out organization tactics will make it so that you can just find stuff immediately rather than scrolling through all your footage trying to find that one clip that you remember that you shot. 
It is a super helpful thing and something that I do all the time. I'm always organizing my footage and watching my footage so that when I actually start cutting, it's boom, 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 done. I don't have to think about where the footage is. Now my next tip is to lay down your first cut as soon as possible. This doesn't matter how good this edit is, just get it down. And this is one of those bottlenecks that happens to people when you're editing is that you don't actually get to the end. The first step is lay down the rough cut. Just get it down on the timeline. There could be huge gaps. There could be just footage missing. You could put in just text that says, add something here, add something here. The key is just get out that initial first cut from beginning to end so you can kind of see the roadmap. And you're like, okay, this is what I wanna edit. It's gonna completely change by the time you export and have your final piece, but laying down that initial cut with like some voiceover and this and that gives you a sense of the project as a whole. So for this project in particular, I have some stuff where I'm talking to camera, I have some voiceover work, I have some music that I was thinking of when I was shooting, and I was like, oh, I like this piece or I like this piece. So my first cut looks like this, and I have a few bits where I'm talking to camera and you can see as I'm scrubbing through this, and a few bits where I have some other people talking to camera, and then you can see on this bottom line down here, that is all my voiceover, some other audio components, and also my music. So I went through and just cut what I had and I, what I wanted to tell my story because the story was the most important thing when it comes to a project like this. I didn't get into the B-roll. I don't start digging into the B-roll right away. Maybe as I'm cutting this first cut, I, I see things and I think of things, drop it in right away. But I'm not gonna sit there and just waste my time tinkering with footage because the more that you tinker, the longer it's gonna take to get to the end of that first cut. Just map it out. Put everything down on your timeline. Put the voiceover work, put the talks, bits where you're talking to camera, whatever style content that you're creating, get it on the timeline because that is your roadmap. Now you look at it, you can see your entire timeline here and you can say, okay, I like the way that this is flowing or I'm missing something major. And this is something that comes up all the time because when you're working in this kind of workflow and you actually put stuff on the timeline, you're like, oh, I get it. This project actually works or this project's not really working. I need to reshoot something or I need to restructure this. Because the idea is that you're basically building your building blocks. You start at the very bottom. You figure out all the blocks that you have. Now you grab the ones that are most important. You throw them up on the timeline. Okay, great. What do I got here? A bunch of stuff. This makes my story. Cool. Is this what I want or do I need to restructure this? And then from there, you start building in the B-roll. You start building in more music, more sound effects, all the other elements that make out the project and really stylize the footage. But you don't do that right away. Start with the bare minimum. Start with just getting that story beginning to end. Okay, so my next tip is use music as a guide. Music is super powerful in videos, and so you wanna use your music to help be the driving force. And this is just an editing technique in general, is use music to help drive the visuals. And so a lot of times I'll come up with ideas of songs that I like, and instead of cutting the footage and then laying the music on after, I will go through the music and figure out the flow, figure out how I want the footage to move. So one of the things that I do that I think is super helpful in speeding up your editing workflow is watch your music, play the music out loud, and create markers. So I'll show you a quick sample here of a song that I used for this project and how I could map out some B-roll to it. So the first things first, I'm gonna play it out loud and I'm gonna listen for beats. So I'm gonna listen for the timing of when I would wanna edit to happen or the pace. And then I'm gonna start using my markers to be like, okay, this is, you know, I wanna cut here, a cut here, a cut here, before I even start thinking about the footage I'm using. So I just made a bunch of markers and I've spaced them out a little differently. I have one pace that happens and then I speed it up a little bit as the song goes on. But use music to help guide how you wanna cut. So let me cut this real quick and show you how this flows. Oh. 
All right, and you can see that was just a quick edit that I did of some of the footage from my climb. I was able to use the music to help me pace the visuals so that it creates more visual interest because it matches up with the music. So use your music to help guide your edit and just working with your music before you actually start cutting B-roll will be a huge help in actually speeding up your workflow. Now there's two more things that I wanna talk about and these are things that have just helped me personally speed up my workflow. So sometimes when you're working with footage, your computer will start to lag. And so I always suggest if there's any issue with playback, proxy your footage immediately. The cool thing about Final Cut is you can go in, you can select your footage, you can go down to your transcode media, create your proxy media. Now all your footage is converted into files that will render fast and move fast in the timeline. And so if you're having any sort of issues with lag, it's gonna be the most annoying thing in the world and it's gonna take you forever to deal with your edits. So instead of sitting around clicking a button and waiting for something to happen, convert everything from the get-go into proxy footage and then you'll be able to cut really fast. And once everything's converted into proxy, you go into the upper right-hand corner, you go to view, you click on proxy under the media. So proxy everything because it's a huge help in speeding up. And I do a lot of multicam stuff, so anything multicam, I always proxy because it just saves headaches down the road. Now my last tip, and I've kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, and that is stop tinkering. Don't just always sit here and play and try to do this one thing over and over and over. Move on. Try to keep getting through your edit and come back to things because when you come back with fresh eyes, you'll start thinking of different ways to cut something. So if there's one piece in your edit that you're struggling with, don't tinker, come back to it, work on it, work on the rest of your project and kind of go back and forth between hard spots and just getting the project finished. Because what will happen is you'll start getting more creative the more that you're kind of moving around your project. And if there is one thing that you just can't get, sometimes it's more beneficial to just move on and drop that. And so you have to kind of weigh the cost benefit. Is it worth it to sit here for 10 hours working on this one effect, getting it just right? Does it have an effect on your project as a whole? Because that's the bigger picture. What are you trying to do with your project? What is your story? What is your delivery? If it is something super technical and something that you really need this one thing to work, then you're gonna have to spend the time. But if it's something where you're adding just a weird graphic into your video that has nothing to do with that graphic and that effect, then move on and do something else because that's not going to help you in the long run. All right guys, if you're really interested in speeding up your workflow, I highly suggest checking out a loop deck. This whole control surface makes it super easy to map out and just make the whole process easier. I still use my keyboard, but the loop deck has definitely enhanced my editing workflow. All right guys, that's it. I'll see you on the next one.